I actually started on this project in 1995 when the uh, city of Humboldt actually asked if I could find the original Humboldt Telegraph uh, station and it was kind of a challenge then because we had a very small budget and uh, a whole quarter section to survey so the question is how do you find a needle in a haystack like that so we we did some kind of interesting things uh, using artifact distributions and geophysics and at the time we, we were able to successfully locate the telegraph station and we thought that the province was actually going to buy the land but it didn't happen and the site fell, sat basically as farmland uh, for many years following. The way we originally got back involved with the, the site is the, uh, the Humboldt Telegraph Committee uh, called me and they said you know we're interested in buying the land but we uh, we want to know that we're buying the right area could you actually come out and show us so uh, we went out there and we took a look around and said oh this is kind of interesting and then they said well could we do some more work out here and when we did the work in 95 uh, using state-of-the-art equipment we could only do very very small areas and we could do with a magnetometer one reading every uh, a meter and it took about five seconds so it was very very slow and and we could only do small areas since then we'd actually bought some state-of-the-art equipment we had our own uh, gradiometer and we could take eight readings a second in a walking pace so in the same time that we could take one reading in the old one uh, system we could actually take well, two seconds, we could probably take about uh, two meters, 16 uh, uh, readings of data. So we had, could collect a lot more dense data. We'd also recently bought a uh, ground penetrating radar unit. And we thought this would be much more useful in picking up some of the buried features. So we were able to actually apply two techniques to the site. And really, this is the first time this has been done in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's always had a, a long history of, of archaeological research uh, going back, uh, oh, at least uh, in the 50s we've had professional archaeologists working in the province. Uh, a lot of archaeology today is actually de development driven and uh, so Saskatchewan is a hotbed of development with oil and gas and mining and as a result it's a hotbed of archaeology so uh, uh, our company is usually kept quite busy uh, looking at uh, uh, various finds across the province. Uh, most of our work is actually done with shovels but uh, we, whenever we can uh, we, we break out the geophysical equipment and, and we can sometimes get some very very spectacular results. It's much more fun to actually map a site before you start digging at it with shovels and, and that's what we're doing at Humboldt. Um, in Europe the tradition of geophysics is much older and in fact it's almost considered unethical to investigate a site without doing geophysics first because why would you just randomly dig holes all over the place? Find out where the features are located and that's what we, we've done actually since the 1995 uh, survey. All of the things were surprising. I mean, as in as, uh, 95, we didn't know there was so much out here. And then all of a sudden, the historical results came in. And we said, oh, we got to look at all these other features. And, uh, and that was kind of exciting. And um, uh, th there's only kind of one uh, amusing story, which I, I shouldn't tell. But uh, in, in uh, the trench photo from 1995, uh, we had the magnetic map. But for whatever reason, the uh, Terry who did the magnetic survey actually didn't put a ortho arrow on it. And I actually had the map oriented the wrong way. So I actually dug in the wrong place, but I landed on top of the trench. So we don't know what the other anomaly is, but we'll look for it in 2010. <laughs> But all the other features, uh, you know, the anomalies were there, we put the trenches there, and, uh, and that's why we were able to achieve such uh, rapid results. We're pretty sure now that we know exactly where the fortified area of Camp Denison is. Uh, we did three uh, gradiometer and uh, magnetic or, um, uh, ground penetrating radar surveys there last year, but we just got a chunk, and it's like uh, three pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. We know the whole thing is there, so we want to finish that off. So uh, basically, uh, come hell or high water, we're going to finish the geophysics of the Denison's fortified area. That leaves the whole outside area of Denison's where uh, um, White Cap was held, where the soldiers, uh, other soldier tents were located. So there's a lot more work, but It'll take us years to complete the geophysics survey of that field and we can only do it in small pieces and uh, our initial focus is finish the geophysics, uh, 
And then if we get a chance, we're going to go back to the telegraph station and do a small bit more excavation there. So this is uh, Jim Finnegan reporting from the uh, old schoolhouse in the Humboldt Museum for ITV Humboldt.